Hi, this is Mark with At My Home, and today we're going to review the Fing Box. Yes, this is a device you plug into your network at home on top of your router, and what it does is it looks at everything that's happening on your network. And so we're going to talk about that today because have you ever wondered, like, hey, is there some device on here that I don't know is supposed to be on my network? Or have you ever wondered if I install that uh, video doorbell, am I going to actually be able to, you know, connect it to my router? Will it be enough signal strength? Um, those are the kind of things that you can do with the Fing Box and much, much more. When you get a Fing Box, it's very easy to install. You just basically take this box, it has a, a connection in the back for a wire. You connect a wire from there into the back of your router. So you have to make sure you have at least one spare port on your router. And then you just plug it in. You download the app onto your iPhone or your Android phone, and uh, you bring up the app, and it automatically scans your network. So we're going to start to the point where I've already got an install that's actually running live right now, and we'll see what it looks like in our network. So first thing up is the front screen. So here's the front screen of the phone. And uh, at the top here, what it's showing you is the different users we have in the house. So for example, Mark and Valerie. Um, the other thing it does, it shows you what network you are and also the fact that we're on Comcast and you can kind of get an idea of what's happening with Comcast. You can actually test the speed, but we're going to do that separately. Okay, so now we're going to go off and see what it's like to use the network. So our network is called SnobNet. A long story there, so we're not going to get into it. Uh, but basically, we'll click on this little arrow and up will come a bunch of selections along the top. So. There's devices, that's what devices you have in your home, everything you have. In our case, we have 110 of them online right now. Um, you have network, that's for testing your network in your house. That's your Wi-Fi router, seeing how that is working in your home. And then internet is exactly what that means, which is your router out to the internet, out to the, out to the rest of the world. Then people is all about the users, and we're going to go through what those, what those all mean. So, but let's first take a look at devices, because that's where we can see what is on our network and control that. So if we go to devices, and what we're going to do is we're going to use search, and we're going to search for Stephanie. So you get Stephanie's guest iPad, and I'll explain that later on when we talk about people. But if I bring up her iPad, as you can see at the top, it allows me to say, hey, here's Stephanie's guest iPad. I call it a guest iPad because that's kind of the category it is. And then what room is it in? I keep it in the guest bedroom. So we can mark that down in there. The other thing is there's an icon at the top and you can actually specify what this is from engineering, home and office, mobile. In this case, mobile, we're calling it's a tablet. So we have it marked off there, but you could set up network and server. And then the big one for us, of course, is smart home. So we have smart home devices and we can identify all those things as smart home devices. And then what it does, it puts up a little picture. So you see there's a cute little picture of the iPad here. And uh, the other thing it does, it tells you the device status. So for example, the iPad is currently on. And so it's been on for three hours. And it tells me when I first saw it back in March of 2020. Uh, and I can actually look at the history and see when the iPad came on and, 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 and went off the network. The other thing you can do, as you can see here, is it shows you what it is. It's an iPad Mini 4, tells me what brand. So Fing has a really large database of devices. It doesn't have them all, but when it does have one, it can tell you all this information about your device. And then the other thing you can do is you can come in here and you can do things like assign this device to a user. You can block the device. So I could click this here and here, and it would say, oh, you're going to block the device. It, it won't work on your network if you block it at all. Uh, I'm going to say no here. Um, you can also pause the internet. And what pause the internet means is that I can say, hey, I want to pause the internet for 30 minutes, two hours, forever. Uh, and what that means by pause internet, which is different from block, is pause internet means that I can't get outside to the internet with a device. But if I wanted to use the iPad still in the home, like say, for example, to print, I can still get to the network printer on our internal network. So the iPad to the printer will work. iPad out to the network or out to the internet will not work. Then once you stop pausing, of course, it will start working again to the internet. And then the other thing you can do is you can actually set a, a notification to say, hey, if the device comes online, 
send me a message saying it's online, or if it goes offline, send me a message. For the iPad, probably not necessary, but if you have smart home devices in your house that you want on all the time, that notification can be very handy. So we did devices. Now let's take a look at the internet. Let's talk about what I can do with the internet. So in this particular part of the application, you can create what's called an internet score. So you can test, it says you're, I said, what did it say here? It says we're the top 30% in the United States at our home. So that's for our internet performance, right? Not performance inside the house, but the performance of working with the internet as we browse the internet or do things on the internet. And I can run a speed test. So just like any speed test you would normally run, the Fingbox will do a speed test, but it does it from the Fingbox out to the internet. And it doesn't do it to some server that's really close. Like if you've ever used speedtest.net, what that will do is it will find the closest server and run the speed test and you get really good numbers. This one here, they use a company called the MLab and they do what they call a real world speed test. So you get an idea of what you're really, really able to do. And you see, we got about 300 megabits per second coming down and we got about 31 megabits per second going up. Now, what's important about that is that the download speed is where if you're doing streaming, so for example, if you're watching Netflix or Hulu or YouTube, either on your PC or your Mac or your TV through, let's say, Apple TV or something like that, that's the amount of bits that can come down. And you want to make sure you have enough. So for example, we, like we're going to show you an example here using Valerie's Mac, she's actually downloading a movie on Netflix and you can see it's pretty heavy usage and it varies over time depending on the scene in the movie, but anywhere between 10 and 50 or 60 megabits per second. So it's really important to remember when I do that test that, hey, I'm using that one video stream is consuming, let's say 15% of my, my bandwidth. And that's probably fine. But if you're someone that has, let's say 100 or 200 megabit per second service, and you're only getting 100, 150 megabits per second, that can be a big load in the system, especially if it's not just you streaming, but your kids are streaming as well. So just keep that in mind. The upload speed is really important as well. That one there is that if you have cameras in your house and you're recording to the cloud with the videos, uh, those cameras will consume typically between one and two uh, megabits per second. So in our case, we could put maybe 10, 15 cameras in our house streaming all at the same time and it would handle it. But if you have a lower speed service, usually if you get one to 200 megabit service, a lot of times the upload speed is more like five or six megabits per second. In that case, you have three or four cameras on that network uh, it's not going to work, right? Either the cameras are going to stutter or they're just not going to work. So just keep that in mind when you start making your house smarter and you add more cameras to the system. Um, the other thing it does in the speed test is it tells you what you can do. So for in our cases, is we can handle ultra high definition 8K. So we don't have an 8K TV, so we're okay. We don't need it, but if we had one, we'd be all set for it. So it just kind of gives you an idea of the things you can do with the internet speed that you're getting. Now, the other thing it does is it keeps track of an average performance during the week. And this is really important because remember I said we get typically 40 sometimes uh, megabits per second up. And you'll see here our average download for the week is 315 megabits per second. And the upload has been 34.7 megabits per second. Now, if you look at the graph though, you'll see there's hot hills and valleys. The upload speed's all been pretty consistent but the download speed's been inconsistent. Now that happens because other people in your neighborhood end up getting on the network. Maybe the kids are all playing video games or whatever else. That will bring down your overall performance of your network. So just keep that in mind if you're wondering why things aren't working well, this graph is kind of handy to make that determination. So one of the other things that we all have been worried about lately is Zoom, right? Our kids are all doing Zoom for school, Zooming with their friends. If you're in business, you're probably doing a lot of Zoom calls. Again, the same thing here, when you run your internet, if you're doing Zoom, Zoom's going to consume a lot of bandwidth, not only sending data down to your screen so you can see your friends or your business associates, but it's also going to uh, take a lot of bandwidth going up because your video stream that you're being videoed goes up. That will also be part of it. So you're, you have two components with Zoom. The download speed, how fast that, that video is going to come down to you, and then the upload speed, which is your video going out to your friends or business associates um, on that Zoom call. So just keep that in mind. All these things consume bandwidth. This is your friend to determine if you're able to handle that bandwidth.
the other thing we want to be able to do is add devices to the system. And as I mentioned before, let's say you're adding a video doorbell. How do I know what it's going to be like outside of my porch where my doorbell is? How good is that internet performance? So one thing that's really nice about Fing is they have a thing called the Wi-Fi performance tab. And what happens is this does an analysis from where you're standing with your phone to your router, right, to the nearest Wi-Fi router you have in your house, and it will test the speed right from there. So watch this. I can say test speed now, and what it's doing is it's looking to see who it's close to, and it's telling me not right now where I'm standing, and I'm a little bit of distance away from one of our uh, access points. Uh, we're getting around 137 megabits per second. So if I wanted to put a, a camera here or I wanted to put a, a doorbell where I'm located, shouldn't be a problem. As it says here, you can again, you can do Ultra HK, so it's pretty fast. But if you're something where maybe it's saying you're only getting 10 megabits per second, then of course you might have some concern and maybe you either have to put a mesh network in and move one of the mesh satellites nearby or get a Wi-Fi extender to support that video doorbell. So just keep that in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is this thing called auto block new devices. So you should have auto block on when you're not trying to add any new devices to your system. But when you're adding new devices to the system, you definitely want to have auto block uh, turned off, right? So you don't want auto block on because you're going to try to add a device. And if you try to add a device and it blocks it, you'll fail in your installation. So now, for example, we added a couple of wise plugs. And so one example is we had the auto block turned on and we tried to install the wise plug. It got part way through it. It asked me for the SSID and the, you know, the, the uh, Wi-Fi password and then it stalled. It wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, install because Fing was blocking it. So wise couldn't install itself. So I had to unblock it. And then we added the second device. This time I remembered to have the auto block feature off. And this time doing the wise installation went right through the uh, device connected up to our network, everything was fine, and we got notified by uh, Fingbox that the device was on. It told me the IP address of the device, the name of the device that got added. It's perfect. Now I can go in again back in the Devices tab, and I can actually name that device something different than whatever, whatever Fing thought it was. A lot of times it gets it right, but if it doesn't and you want to change it, remember you can just always go to the Device tab and click on that device and put the right name in there. So kind of handy. Okay, so the other tab you have is called People, and this is where you can add users to the Fing box. And let's just do it and see how that works. So I'll say Add, and it says I want to access my contacts. So you can actually find the contacts, and we're not going to actually use the contacts in this case, but I'm going to create a custom user. I'm going to call that user Stephanie, and her gender is known, so I'm going to make sure we put down female in this particular case. And she's family. And then the so category is a, is a kid, so she's my kid, so I can say kid here. Um, and then I can select the devices that she uses. So in this case, we want to add Stephanie's iPad. So let's see if we can find Stephanie's iPad in here. There it is, Stephanie's guest iPad. So I add Stephanie's guest iPad. And now I do a save. And now what we've done is we've created a user, and you have to, it's a little bug, I think, in the... Uh, the program, you have to go back to people. But now what you'll see is Stephanie is now part of our list of people that are here. And the nice thing now is I can keep track of what's happening with her. But the other one I want to show you is Mark and Valerie. So we're the ones that live here all the time. And if you look at the, the display here, you can see that we have a little green dot with Mark and Valerie. And that signifies that we're actually home. If one of us were to leave the house or both of us leave the house, of course, the dot would, would no longer be green because it would say we weren't home. It also keeps track of who's at home. So Mark and Valerie, it's showing that we're home most of the day. We're out for just a short amount of time today. Um, so it, you can totally track who's there, who's not there. In the case of Stephanie, since she's a guest, I don't have her phone right now hooked up to it. She would have to come here. I would add her phone to the network, and then she could use her phone as the presence device, then we would know whether she was in the house or not. And when she comes here next, we'll do that. Let's look at Valerie, for example. And we, you can see Valerie here, and I can get notifications of whether she's home or not home if I want. I can also pause her internet, so just like everything else, I can pause the internet and she won't be able to get outside from her devices. Um, 
And it also lists all the devices she has. So she's got the Mac, she's got a MacBook Air, and she has an iPhone. Now in this case, because she has an iPhone, Thingbox is defaulted to say, and you can see the little person on here, that that is their, her presence device. So if that phone is here, then it'll, it'll say the, that she's home. If she's not here, it'll say she's not home. But it's her presence device. The other devices don't matter in that case of presence. The phone does. If, on the other hand, she had, let's say, two phones and you only wanted the other phone to be the presence device, you can go in and change it to whatever you want to be the presence device. Okay, so the other thing you can do is if you have a kid that the kid needs to do homework and you want to block that person from using the internet during that time, you can do what's called schedule internet pause. And so here's the case. All right, let's take a look at my kid. It's homework time. And what I did is in this case, I selected Stephanie with my kid. And I can say what days of the week I want this to happen and what time. So I can say, let's say from, let's say six at night, right? Till, till eight o'clock, all right? So I'm gonna pause the internet for Stephanie from six to 8 p.m. because she needs to do homework and just Stephanie's gonna get paused. So all her devices will not be able to talk to the internet. They'll still be able to talk to the printers in the house or whatever the other devices that that device can talk to, but they can't get to the internet. So this is a great feature for parents who really wanna control the internet access for their children. You saw how easy it was to pause the internet for a person in the house, one of the users in the house. In this case, we were talking about one of my kids. Now, the thing to keep in mind is while it pauses the internet, it pauses it for Wi-Fi. But if the child's device is a phone and the phone has internet access through cellular connection, that blo blocking won't happen because this only blocks on Wi-Fi uh, in network devices in your house, not over cellular. So just keep that part in mind. So one of the really nice thing about the thing boxes, you can put one in your house and monitor your house but if you want to monitor, let's say, your parents' house for them, uh, you can also add a thing box there, and then you can access that thing box and monitor their network. So if you're monitoring your parents' house, the nice thing about that is, let's say, for example, someone comes to her house, they try to get on her network, the auto block is on, they're not going to get in the network, and you're going to get notified that someone's trying to come on the network. There's so much more you can do with the thing box, so don't be afraid to explore. Thank you for watching our video today. I'll put links to where to buy in the description below and also links to the Fing website where they have great information on how to use the Fing box. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring the bell. And for more smart home stories, visit appmyhome.com. Thank you.